Hi everyone. Today, unfortunately, I'm alone, but I have a friend. I think for half an hour I will speak with her. Don't go. No, Lydia Pokai is here and it's with us. <laughs> for uh, many of you who don't know who she is, she is the winner of Hid uh, Hidden Queens Awards from uh, last year. But also in 1999 to 2004, she was the sole, uh, solo female voice of extremely successful Eurodance project Erotic. During the, this time, Lydia collaborates with producer David Brandes from Bros Music, the first single release featuring Lydia as the singer as Erotic was Mambo Number no. 6. Lydia not only leads her voice to numerous projects like Missing Hearts, The Lovers, Ap Apanache, and Bad Boys Blue, but also performs with uh, household names such Chris Norman and Chris Roberts. In 2017, she established her own label, Lady R Records, Lady Records, sorry, that released songs of her project Girly and Wunschlos. Correct? Perfect. Uh, first, first, I want to ask you, how did you start your music career? Okay, and before I answer that question, mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. So for all those that don't know, it's Tavi's birthday today, yeah? <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy, happy birthday. Um, how did you start your music career? Now I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> how did I start my music career? Mm, I think everything began when... I think I was around 16, 17. So mm -hmm. I participated in a contest in, for karaoke. And then mm -hmm. just by chance, there was a producer. It was Novak Dao who was sitting um, in the audience. And yeah, and then he asked me if I would like to participate in a mixed group uh, as a singer. Uh, mm -hmm. That was uh, for two girls and two boys and and we planned to yeah to, to to do a kind of like a mixed group because at that time like the girl groups and boy groups were very famous and we said okay let's do a mixed group right something new and then we started already recording many songs and then after a while uh, he asked me yeah if i would like to sing a song for a colleague for a colleague producer and it was David, and David invited me to his studio. I was at that time 18, 18 years old, mm -hmm. and I was singing the song When the Indians Cry. Yeah, uh, so that was the first one. And then he said, yes, great, and, and wow, we could do something regarding that project. And then, but, you know, would you like to, oh, let's try something, yeah? And then he, he gave me the song and it was Touch Me. Yeah, later on, it, uh, you, you probably know that song. Touch me, I want to know if you know that I love you. I and it. let's do a test. I would like to see, can you maybe sing that song for me? And yeah, and yeah, cool, yeah, of course, let's do it, yeah. So I was singing that song. And I don't remember, I think it was after a while, because then I went home back again. And then he called me. Well, you know, what would you say if I would ask you to sing for one of my groups? And then I say, yeah, yeah why not? What is the group and so on? And he said, do you know erotic? And then I said, yes, of course I know erotic, yeah, because um, erotic was super famous when I was a child. I didn't under understand the, the English, yeah, so for me, you know, I was singing it. I didn't know what I'm singing, yeah, so all around sex and so on, but I liked it. it, it had a good beat and, and yeah, I was at that time, I think 11 or 12, something around that, when Erotic was famous. Yeah, and then, yeah, yes, of course, but then I was a little bit worried because, you know, the noises that you, that the singer is sometimes doing, uh, oh dear, how can I do that, you know? <laughs> yeah, let's try, yeah, let's be courageous, let's try it. Yeah, and that was, 
the beginning of everything. And we recorded as the first song, as you mentioned already, we have recorded uh, Mambo Number no. Six. Uh, about the uh, this song Mambo Number no. Six uh, was the first single as erotic and as uh, Lydia Pokai vocalist, uh, solo, solo, uh, second uh, vocalist of erotic. The but, but the for me it's a funny song, not in a good way, because um, um, the song it's funny and can uh, make a little bit fun of the previous hits from uh, Erotic. And why this song had uh, had in the, a video? To be honest, I don't know. I think it was. Um... It was a test to, um, yeah, because this was not original erotic, it was covered, you know, and to be honest, I don't know why it never had a video. At that time, still, um, Jadette was performing and some mm -hmm. of the erotic songs had videos, I remember, some not. To be honest, I really don't know. I even don't, I even did not ask, yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's a good song. Uh, if uh, someone uh, of you the, don't know the single uh, Google on uh, YouTube, on the, you can find it and what I mean. Um, another uh, question I want to ask you was uh, about uh, Erotic was your first uh, project, dance project? Yes, that was the first dance project because the project before with the mix group was more, more pop. Yeah, so it mm -hmm. was was not dance, it was more the pop area, yeah. And yes, Erotic was the first dance project. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a, a little bit of Missing You album, because for me it's uh, an album more mature and uh, has more songs that uh, don't rely with previous songs from Erotic. And... Uh, why this uh, album was not so much promoted? I think because it was uh, it was super famous still in Japan and other countries, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe that's why it was enough. Yeah, so uh, David was thinking, yeah, it's okay. It is it is famous in Japan. That's okay. Yeah, and and Germany changed at that time because um, they I think they, the the style was starting to change and you know the the topic sex became like oh, oh we shouldn't read that public and you know and and this is at, at least at that time what i've also heard that radios didn't didn't really want to play that you know because it's around sex and so on you know mm -hmm. I think that was that was a little bit of reason, but uh, again, erotic was very famous in Japan and other countries, so I think it was okay. Yeah. Um, it was the first time when I heard the uh, erotic in my country in Romania uh, with this album, and uh, let's say it, missing you, Queen of Light, don't go, don't make me wet, uh, was in the heat of the night, was very often played. Um, tell me a little bit of Queen of Light because uh, Erotic was the first dance project who competed on Eurovision Song Contest. Who wrote that song uh, and you did the backing vocals on that event or was just uh, Jeanette? Um, I mean, the, the original uh, voice recording was me, of course, yes, but for that uh, event, we have we have uh, teached uh, Jeanette so because it is important this is a live uh, event and it is important that the singer is singing and we we were thinking about okay how to maybe we can mix it a little bit but but then we decided no Jeanette do it do it so I remember that, <laughs> that she was in the studio and I said you will make it you will make it yeah so I think we did uh, also some training and I mean she 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 was uh I don't think she she was singing before that much and for that she did a great job i mean her performance was uh, very nice she looked very great mm -hmm. and yeah, for not being like you know a, a practiced singer she did a, a really good job and i was sitting really in the first row and i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, the time, so, yeah. 
it's a beautiful uh, song, but uh, because I was laughing, uh, Samira was sending a message. Why you are keeping uh, putting names of the girls? And uh, I put Queen of Light because I saw you a picture with the LEDs and I said, uh, you are looking at Queen of Light exactly like uh, the song from Erotic. <laughs> Today anyway, because my light is well, I really tried my best. I, I was hiding the light, but without light it is too dark. With this bit of light, and, and trust me, this is really just a little bit of light, but somehow the computer is doing like, you know, and <laughs> like, I look like a ghost. I'm really sorry. I tried my best. You don't don't even worry, you look fine. You don't worry, don't, you look fine. <laughs> Uh, you are also involved in writing uh, the songs for this album or just uh, performing? Uh, performing. Uh, yes, I was actually performing. So I think almost all songs, maybe there was one or two um, exceptions, but uh, almost all songs were written by David. Mm -hmm. And vocals were, were written by uh, Bernd Meinunger. So mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was like a collaboration. Everyone had his role and I was performing. Yeah, and for me, it was okay. And after this album uh, came uh, the Missing uh, Heart missing heart uh, project? Oh, yeah, my love project. Oh, I love that one. I really love that one. Oh, that, was a, that was a fun project. What can you tell me about this project? Um, we started with Tears in May. And mm -hmm. that was a request coming, I believe, from Japan that they wanted uh, the uh, single. Mm -hmm. And we did it. And in that way, um, I was recording at the, uh, that song with Alvin Groll, so also my partner in crime in these times as well, who is, uh, I'm working with him close together. And we were recording that song and we, we were super creative. We did some back vocals, you know, second, third, and yeah, some, yeah, we were trying like, yeah, let's try that, let's try that. And I remember that that David at that time didn't like it, but the but Japan liked it. And then suddenly uh, they came back and we want an album. Yeah, and that's that's how the project got an album. Yeah, because there were like one or two singles, really 90, 93 and ninety four. Um, I remember Liane was uh, singing like I think two singles for Missing Heart. And then for a long time there was nothing anymore, if I remember well. And then suddenly Tears and Make came, and then they wanted an album. Yeah, so that was the story. And the only video video for this project was Tears in May. For Tears in May, but that video was made by, I think, Sony Music. At least it was a label. Uh, um, yeah, it was label, yeah, Sony, or mm, I hope I don't say anything wrong, but I think mm -hmm. it was a label who did, uh, because it came on Dream Dance, I remember, like a kind of guest song, yeah, so like mm -hmm. a program at the end. and. And they quickly created some video. I'm. I don't know if my memory is that 100% because it's really long time ago. But I remember that it was the label who did that video. Yeah. Um, it's the only album uh, from this project. I think it's. Really yes, so far I don't know if Gross Music has any other plans so far. But yeah, I think this is the only one. Yeah. Another album that I liked from you was uh, Sex Generation. Uh, <laughs> uh, my favorite songs from there uh, are uh, Miyamante, who is uh, also was a hit here, uh, sang uh, Schlager, I think. Was it really? Uh, yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> um, why this uh, uh, was released as a single, but a different project, ER? Why? That that I know. To be honest, I have no idea. I don't remember. It was maybe maybe David planned another project or he got a request to do so. I don't know. To be honest, I don't remember. Shame on me. <laughs> don't worry. I'm here to remind you. <laughs> um, another, another song that I like uh, from this album was The Story is Over. Uh, this song has a story. Is over. Na, 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 na. That was very abba like no? Don't you think mm -hmm. so? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. When I was singing that song, I was like, hmm. Um, a fan of <laughs> you says, says that Mi Amante was a cover by Simone my Simone for uh, Schlager in German. 
Oh, nice. Not too bad. If it is covered by nice artists, fantastic. I'm I think proud. in 2000, I don't know uh, which time. Uh, if uh, someone of you knows uh, when was uh, this uh, Schlager uh, hit, tell me. And I will uh, say to Lydia. Uh, Lydia. Um, another album, Cocktail of Erotic. Oh, yeah, that was nice too, yeah. <laughs> tell me, what, what can you tell me about, about this album? I think that was, was it the last album that I was singing? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, right? And on that album, there is also Lemmings on the Run. Could it be? Is that right? Yes, Lemmings yes, on the right. Run? That, that one was a fun one. And Lemmings on the Run was thinking, Lemmings and Erotic? How does that match? Yeah, that, that, that album was... Um, I think in 2003 or 2004, something like that. Um, so it was, um, as it was different like the others. It was like um, we we did various styles in that album also, and really very special. So um, I don't remember um, like uh, the backgrounds of the of the songs because actually um, I didn't write them. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. I was getting the songs, I was getting the, vo uh, the the lyrics, and I was just singing. But I remember that that Lemmings on the Run was is very special in my memory because it was so such a fun song, and I think it is also like uh, most famous on Spotify even, right? Mm -hmm. Like from that album, it is quite high rated, and um, yeah, it was really fun to do that album. But also. There is also two songs that I like also, Dangerous Kiss and it's I'm Over You. Oh, and true. Dangerous Kiss is also nice. You know, uh, all these memories come back and if you tell me and then I yeah, true, that song I like as well. Oh, yeah, that song I like as well. You know what I, <laughs> I like, for example, Seven Seconds. Oh. Seven Seconds is one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite. Yeah, this is like, you know? On lay back and uh, also um, Chico, I don't remember. Chico Chaco, yeah, that song is also funny. Oh, don't make me wet. <laughs> it's, it's powerful. Why not? Because from that period it was very good, and I I said that was not promoted as single. And also, uh, with previous, with your voice, uh, Erotic uh, had a more matter and also was not promoting a, sing a single, Dangerous Kiss, I'm Over You, um, let's say it, Missing You, Don't Go. Don't go! <laughs> yeah, but there were like a few singles were promoted and I think a, a lot of promotion happened in Japan. In Germany, again, it was like, you know, this topic, it was about this topic, sex. And I think that was the main reason and the labels didn't do a lot, maybe. I don't really know the reason. This is really the assumption and what I've heard. But yeah, that's true. And in Germany, we had also like um, Billy Jive that was promoted, also King Kong, because we had videos, mm -hmm. remember? So that was really promoted. And I think it was also in that album, no? Billy yes. Jive. Oh, Billy Jive with Willie's wife. Oh, I can't come here. That, uh, mm -hmm. that nice song. You remember, you remember. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, the, 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 main, the main vocals. Oh, Billy Jive with Willie's wife. Yeah. So you uh, never forget. You miss, don't you miss to sing the, those songs? Of course. Of course, because that was so much fun. I mean, we were singing, especially, you know, the, these, these special noises like, oh, oh, you know, it was like, and I can tell you how that started. That started really super special, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the first time I had to do that in that song. Don't ask me which song it was, because um, Mambo Number no. 6, I think, I, I don't remember if there were these voices, but the first song that I had to do that, I was like super shy mm -hmm. and I was like, I said, oh, I don't know how to do that. And David was sitting in, in front of me, you know, there was like this, this big window in the studio. And then 
we were communicating via the earphones and David was not alone in the studio. There was like Alvin was there and, and maybe other guys as well, you know, like men are looking at you and then say, yeah, do these noises. And I said, uh, I can't do that, right? And then, you know, David said, okay, I do something. And he switched the light off. So it was black. It was just black. I didn't didn't see anything. And then suddenly I started, oh, oh, you know, and then worked that was the that was the start that was the first time i ever did that and since then i was just do it ah 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 yeah so it worked it worked always but i needed this this first time to switch off the light you know i had to get it smooth that, um, was, that was super fun why do you think uh, the dance music especially uh, in germany is not promoted on radio I wouldn't say that this is not promoted uh, on video. I mean, there are many dance songs in radio, but you know, the German radio is really very tailored, I would say. You know, the, the big labels are telling the, the big radio stations what they have to play. Yeah. Um, I assume that also this is what, what the radios yeah are paid for also, you know, and they are like very... Uh, but but it's not... Uh, It's not sad because uh, many of artists, especially in this period, they need because in Denmark, for example, in Sweden, they start to promote their artists and give a chance. And here we hear American stuff. Oh yeah, that's over that's... and over, over and over. I think because they are paying a lot of money. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> No, might be yeah. so this is all about money and um i know the swiss there are swiss radio station for examples that have like uh, some time left and um and and promote also like newcomers so this that's why i like uh, uh swiss radios mm -hmm. but, uh, but the german ones are really like very strict they have very strict rules and even if they would love to give a chance mm -hmm. newcomer they can't um it is it is very regulated yeah um, let's say no because a little bit i work and i know how the business is, is there and uh, when you promote it when you put it on the playlist the same song the people are uh, used with this song if we promote the also our artist i think the public will love to mm -hmm. listen the old stuff the old stuff from 90s period uh let's uh talk about bad boys blue how was working with them i was working with them it was always very funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were super loud super funky super mm -hmm. funny. I, yeah yeah and, and i think uh If I remember well, there was always like um, never boring. It was never boring. So yeah, that's what I remember. It was always super funky and funny. They were doing many jokes and yeah, they were super crazy. Yeah, super crazy guys. Uh, for which album did you borrow your voice? That one. <laughs> you know that one? This is yes. around, around the world. The world. Yeah, I think so. It was around the world, if I remember well. Yeah, so at least I have it. Yeah, that was the one. And I was doing the back vocals and some, some, yeah, um, some songs were like uh, with together with female and and the man voice. So John was singing. Yeah, so like duets, you know, we were doing a few ones. Tell me a little bit uh, the project. Uh, let's say it. Uh because I like to hear the voices and uh, my uh, own reason was to do this uh, contest for uh, real voices. How was uh, the news to be nominated on this uh, award? I was surprised. I didn't expect that to be honest. I was like, what? No. <laughs> you know, at the beginning, it's like, Yeah, if you if you are on the top at the beginning, it says nothing because it can change so quickly. And we mm -hmm. say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no chance. I mean, 
if you see the competition of all the female female lady uh, vocals, so all the super talented and famous ladies are saying, forget about that, I have no chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did not, I said, yeah, yeah, maybe at the moment I'm leading, but that will change at least, you know, in the in the last period. So the few last minutes and everyone is voting, voting. No, she won't win. She won't win. Right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. And suddenly, hey, by the way, you won. The what? I don't tell me crap. Yeah, no, really? no. You had the good fans. No, no, you, yeah. have, you have a good uh, fans. So uh, they vote you. I was, I was super proud. I didn't never, ever, never, ever. I would have expected that. No uh, way, no way. It was a, an award, let's say so, for celebrating the good voices because it's more important, especially nowadays, to celebrate good voices and give uh, the Cesar what uh, Cesar deserves, let's say so. And uh, I'm thankful if I uh, can brought to you, especially for these ladies, a little bit of uh, happiness and a little bit smile. Um, that was wonderful, so Really, wonderful idea, really. Um, what do you think? Do you think that commercial looks sells more than uh, actual the voice? Um, yes and no. I mm -hmm. think the look is unfortunately still very important. It was also at that time when I was uh, at Erotic. So I was not really fitting to, to be, you know, doing uh, performing on stage because i was more like the pop person and and erotic was like the the you know that mm -hmm. sex person and i was i was too young i was like you know i was looking that way there was nothing i was like too too tiny and, yeah so um i think it is important and depends to the project um you know like if you for example uh, look on certain certain artists like gossip yeah she was she had a little bit more weight you know and was still um very famous and there are so many more maybe they don't look super pretty they they don't have like the boobs like that you know they don't whatever they someone is black and not blonde you know and um they it is possible but the look is still was and still mm -hmm. is very important but Talent is also important. So if you are talented and you are fighting for it and you are passionate and you know you it's you just go on and do what you can and yeah, it's still possible and it will it will yeah, it will work, right? But many artists probably also give up, yeah, mm -hmm. because they are so focused on being famous instead of like doing what's their passion is yeah so i was always thinking for me the being famous or whatever was never important i just mm -hmm. wanted I, i wanted to sing yeah and one day i wanted also to be on stage um at that time i was planned for another project for xen 2 so i was like mm -hmm. that was my my vision at that time and for erotic you know there was janet janet was fitting perfect on the stage for erotic yeah she she had you know everything that erotic was, needing. was the perfect image was yeah. the perfect image. Exactly, she was the perfect image and I was fitting to another style, like more the pop, the romantic, you know, I am I am generally the more romantic type. Mm -hmm. I am not the one who is like jumping around, you know. <laughs> oh, here, no, please. Um it's it's not my style, yeah. I am I am different. I am I am different. Uh so yeah, I have to perform for other projects. But you um, again, this is really important. Um, maybe the combination, a kind of combination, talent and and also a certain look, style. It, you don't have to be pretty, but you have to be like uh, you have to, you need to have something, right? Maybe the eyes, like looking like dangerous, right? You know. Yes, exactly. Or maybe being just super funny or whatever, having something. Yeah. So, but the look is important. Uh, but you appear with erotic, I think, on Upread the Sky in 2000, I don't know, 2003? I can't remember. 2002 or 2003, something like that. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't remember. Because before I was on TV, t on TV that was 2003. Before mm -hmm. I was like, performing on stage, I was in Estonia. I was in in Switzerland as well, in Germany. There, there was something also in Japan. Japan was also 2003, I believe. 
and so on. So there were some um, yeah performances, something around 2002, 2003, yeah. Are you thinking to participate on one of these contests, uh, The Voice or X uh, Factor? Maybe sitting in the jury, yeah, and, and that would be nice but not on the stage i think I, i leave the stage for for real newcomers right mm -hmm. and that's important and yeah it's nice to watch them it's nice to see really the talents i think it, that's the stage for these guys uh tell me because uh lucas wants also to know why this xana 2 uh, was never really uh, released as a project Xentu, I believe Xentu was released, but after my time. So Xentu at, at my time was not released. I don't know. Um, I don't really know the reasons. Um, that was also like the reason why I I said, okay, it's time for me to go because that was my hard project, Xentu. And I I was like, I was I came to Bros because of Xentu. Mm -hmm. And then after a while I didn't see any progress and I didn't see any plans for that, at least not with me as artist. And yeah, for me, that was kind of like, yeah, that was the time to say goodbye. Um, now coming to nowadays, uh, what is up to Lydia nowadays? Nowadays, what I do, uh, as you mentioned already, I am working on two projects, on a German project, so it's Wunschlos, mm -hmm. and on an English project, it's Gurdy. Yeah, so I have like, I'm doing these two projects because actually I, I like both. I like dance. I cannot like stop doing the dance um, mm -hmm. area. I'm so used to that and it's still in my heart and I love it. And also Wunschlos just to try it German, why not, you know, but not like Schlager, this is not not my style, I, I feel too young for that, still, <laughs> but uh, even though I like Schlager, but it's, I am not there, you know, you have to be in, in, in that, that kind that. of like feeling, yeah, that you want to do something, yeah, and I'm, I'm not there yet, maybe one day, I, I don't know. Never say never say never, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I prefer at the moment like going on with pop, German pop, yeah, because um, I like that, and also going on with dance. And uh, I don't know what comes, what else will come. So yeah, stay tuned. So the next, so the next releases will be with Wunschlos or uh, with Girlie? I am finalizing the next signal for Wunschlos, so that that will be very soon and. Um, Early. I'm working on the album, so currently on three songs for the album. So I think, um, well, I, I sometimes think, can that be that I would probably release two albums for Wunschlos and Gurdy this year? That would be really fantastic, but that's the goal, yeah. So I'm working on Gurdy album. I did not yet decide what of which which of the songs will be the single. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure yet. That's why I cannot say when the single of for Gurdy will come, but also very soon. But I assume that Wuchlos will be quicker right now. Another question um, about Lady. After uh, Kiss Me, something planned? It was something planned, but then I, I've decided that uh, three projects at the same time, it's probably too much for me because it's really already I'm super busy with the two. And I think I prefer to do two projects very well instead of three projects but crappy you know and you know i'm i'm like a quality person and when i do something i want to do it with heart i want to take time and that's the reason why at the moment there is no space for lady um mm -hmm. but i don't say that i don't want to say that there won't be any release anymore but at the moment i really want to focus and want to deliver quality from the heart yeah instead of mm -hmm. like just releasing are you thinking to release uh, something acoustic versions of your old songs acoustic versions of my old songs mm -hmm. why not let's see what happens yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> uh, andreas from germany wants to know if you are planning to do some 90s revival songs or dance songs or any albums planned 
Uh, the albums, yes, as mentioned, yes, for Wunschlos and Girly, definitely, but with new songs. And um, yeah, I, I am not yet there to cover stuff. Uh, there are a few songs where I was thinking, um, maybe I could cover, but you know, I, I have so many songs and melodies in my head. I have so many to, to, to produce. Why should I then cover? Yeah, I think covering for me at least is covering stuff is like if you don't have ideas anymore, then you are covering. <clears throat> yeah, don't take this for granted. I don't know. I don't want to say like this is bad, and because I would love to cover one day, um, but songs that I really love and um, you know probably th that would be different songs that you expect. Yeah, but. I need time for that. But at the moment, I have my, my head is full of ideas and melodies, and uh, I prefer to do new stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But look at uh, nowadays music because everything is a remix a cover from 90s, <laughs> nothing yeah. original. <laughs> yeah, it, well, terrible. The music was great, Ter that was great. But I, I, if it is like too much, it is too much, you know. I think. I think maybe maybe new ideas are missing to people. I really don't know. Or it is like easier to earn money. But that was never a topic for me. It is really, I do something because, not because uh, I want to get rich, right? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Certain income, yeah, to go on with production and so on. So that's, of course, needed. But if you start thinking that you are doing that only for money, then you are losing being an artist. Yeah, at least this is my opinion. Uh, because um, you mentioned uh, becoming an artist and nowadays uh, people want to be on top and uh, forgetting uh, about the passion and uh, things just only to be famous, you know? Yeah. That's sad, that's sad. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's that's really super sad, and we are we are living currently in times where everyone is an influencer, everyone is a DJ, and yeah everyone wants to be famous everyone wants to be pretty and there are many surgeries you know around It girls are like early 20 you know they are already like completely reworked i call it reworked yeah i think it's maybe i am too old and and i am not used no. to that it's no, like no, no. i just have the feeling oh how sad yeah but why the Unfortunately, especially nowadays, uh, young uh, kids uh, from 10, 11, they're watching this and take as an example. It's sad. It's really sad. Um, tell me what means for you music. Ah, oh, music is my love. My first, second, third and last love. Yeah. Oh, hopefully my husband is not watching. Sorry. Sorry, baby. No, but, but he knows. Music is really my love, my passion, my everything. It's um, uh, when I was well, probably when I started thinking, I, I, I was already thinking in melodies. You know, I was like when I was super little, and this is the first what I remember when since I remember, I can remember something. I was singing. I was I knew like songs by heart, even though I was like almost a yeah. I don't know. I think three, four. My mom told me that I was like singing. All the songs that were in the radio that she had on her uh, LP and so on. So I, I knew them. I was singing, even though I couldn't even speak English. Yeah, and also like the the all the songs for children. I knew everything by heart. This is what I know from my mom, mm -hmm. and these are also the memories. So my memories. Yeah, it was always music there and the love to music it's like always you know when i start thinking suddenly about music i could start crying and this is like so emotional it's i cannot explain that it's it's here yeah and this is my love because because you hidden queen because and many others of hidden queens you have the power to transmit music and a few of uh, artists who are real artists can transmit the message that the uh, public can relate with. Because I was in a night, it's a uh, fan and I'm still... Um, tell me if you are a Eurodance uh, music lover. I, I am. I think that was one of the best times ever. Um, and I'm missing it. I'm dearly missing it. So mm -hmm. I would... Me too. 
of, uh, uh, more. And to be honest, when I started with Girlie, I was thinking uh, about doing it more in this Eurodance style, but then like it was just crapping all the time. And then, yeah, this is too 90s, this is too Eurodance, you have to be more modern and you have to think a little bit that way, that way. And I was like, oh, shut up. Yeah, I will do what I want. So I, and then, of course, you have to combine. We are in times, you cannot like do this the old style because maybe no one will listen. So you have to. Mm -hmm. Okay, how can I combine it a little bit? How can I mix the new with maybe with some um, some portions of the old? You know, because my heart still is in the nineties. Yeah, I grew up that time. Mm -hmm. I will probably will always stick to that time, and my music will always have some elements from that time. I cannot hide. Yeah, so even if I would like to be super modern, there will always be like a part from the eighties or the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, guys, apologies. But that's, are, how I am. that's how I am. We are the X generation that is called the yeah. MTV and the Viva generation. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what if you look on TV, there is nothing, nothing that in that direction. I mean, MTV, they have like they are re reporting stuff that there is no music anymore, like at that time. I mean, it's really it's sad. It's sad. really sad. Yeah, I don't want to say that, but let's say it's sad. Yeah, because uh, many uh, of uh, my friends told me why you love this uh, genre, why you are promoting this. Because I keep remind me, uh, remember uh, the t good times from high school, and I had good times and good parties with nighty stuff. And uh, this period is for me is the uh -huh. most beautiful. Whew, when I think who. <laughs> <laughs> We are not so old. <laughs> Only on the food, one food. <laughs> uh, let's uh, uh, go with Vince Vega. Wants to know what is your favorite uh, movie? My favorite movie. Mm, it was very for a very long time. For a very very long time, it was. Um, Dirty Dancing. Can you imagine that? Dirty Dancing, then Pretty Woman. So I was, I think I was, look, I, I don't know actually how many times I watched that movie. Yeah, and you see it's again music, right? Music related. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Dirty Dancing. And it still is, to be honest, because when I when I think about uh, movies, I have some favorite movies, but not with that passion and with that heart like Dirty Dancing. I like the Alien uh, movies. Mm -hmm. I have like the bloody person uh, <laughs> yeah, the very romantic um or the very bloody yeah that's yes. what i like but so i can say i can confirm again it's dirty dancing very that, okay okay yeah. and the ghost and the with uh, patrick strazy and not <laughs> as well as well so i like that movie as well but my favorite number one is and will probably be forever dirty dancing it, yeah that's the movie The movie um, for me uh, that I watched so many times was uh, the um, movie with Angelina Jolie, something about life or something like that. Uh, it's okay. a good movie. Um, tell me why these people uh, don't uh, want to be, to listen to this uh, genre of Eurodance, put a label of the people who are listening to this music. But in the end, uh, they are still in the shows promoting because I was in the 2016 on the show and the radio, who is very big here, was joking around and was a promoter media on night show. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> What happened? Tell me. Um, it was a uh, uh, night show, the, the Nighty Girl. Mm -hmm. And on the matinal, the morning show, uh, was two guys uh, laughing about DJ Bobo or something like that. And the night is stuff. Oh, that's a snip music. What is this? Hmm. And in the show was the DJ from that radio show promoting dance music from the 90s. <sighs> How to say it diplomatic? Yeah. I don't have diplomatic words. Can I be honest? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that those people who are like on one hand judging, um, they are just 
to go with the style, with the with the time, and be cool. And on mm -hmm. the other hand, they are probably the the worst fans of that style, but they, they are maybe feeling ashamed. So for me, those guys are really very very poor people. It's a shame to be to to put a label to list a genre of music. I have no idea. Maybe yes, I think so. Could be. Don't you think? Tell me. I don't know. I don't know. Depends of the mentality. Uh, If you are growing the cave, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's strange. I, you know, I can tell very open. I was for a long time uh, also a fan of Kelly Family. Yeah, and you know, and many people laughed at me. Oh, can you like Kelly Family? So, yeah, because it it touched my heart. It touched my heart. This was like a family. It was so lovely. I was. I was at that time, I think, 14 or 15, very, very young, and they touched me. Yeah, and and actually, music is music is music. It doesn't matter which style of music. That's why you know, like schlager, even uh, folk music, and and mm -hmm. whatever. If you don't like it, don't listen. But if you exactly. want to be um, like a music fan, then you have to be also open to other styles. You cannot say, okay, I am a music fan, I love music, and then you you love just uh, techno, for example. I mean, this is not really being open to music, right? So yeah. then tell me that you are loving music, yeah, if you are like judging, because every style has a certain, certain, yeah, romance, feeling, um, passion, yeah? And uh, you have to be open to everything. If you don't like it, just shut up and don't listen, yeah? Exactly. If, yeah. I have uh, this uh, kind of uh, people in on my work, but uh, let's not talk uh, about the work and me. Let's talk about you. Uh, with whom uh, do you like to do a collaboration? Or uh, do you have uh, any favorite uh, artists of nowadays, of dance music from nowadays? Yeah, and, and you won't believe who it is. I would love to sing with Mike Patton, and this is a complete, complete different style. Maybe no one uh, knows him. Um, I would love to sing with Mike Patton. So maybe you know Faith No More, the singer of Faith No More, yes. Mike Patton. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love his voice. I would love to do a duet with him. He is so cool, yeah, and he has such a talent. He mm -hmm. he's able to sing so many styles, from shouting to like being this very male deep vo voice you know uh, very romantic and sexy and yeah so this is an artist i would love to work together um what do you think about uh, now the uh, dance nowadays of, uh... at the moment the current dance style mm -hmm. Um, I think that um, I cannot remember the the artists because all the vo voices are very similar. That's very heavy for me to remember. <laughs> who, who. <laughs> I, maybe I don't know. Maybe this is just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. is it? <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> But that's that's true. I'm very honest. Yeah, I cannot really remember the the people because the vo the voices are so same somehow. And I remember. And again, you know, everyone is saying, yeah, because you grew up at that time, you are really th that focused and so used to that music and so on. But that's not true, because at at our age, between before, I don't know when it started with this like um, mechanic and same voices. I don't remember. Maybe the same time mm -hmm. when. DJing and so on, like became that famous. But yeah. before I remember that there were always like in the charts, there were various styles, really various voices. There was black music, there was, you know, uh, people who were like singing like Celine Dion. There were like, um, um, you know, rock was in, all the styles were in. And now I have the impression every everything sounds very similar and same. Oh yeah, I hope I my music is not, Then the same like everything I really hope I try my best but this is my impression and I really try to do a little bit to be always a little bit different try to be modern but still different yeah and not the same I have, a, I have a friend who is a hard rocker and uh, one time I saw him listening Dr. Alban in the 90 stuff and he said to me why are you listening this <laughs> because because relax me and <laughs> And they do, they do. I met, I was in a, in a radio interview 
I think it was last month, I don't remember. And there was um, a punk group. I think it was, they, they, they are doing a yeah, punk group. And and they knew erotic. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, I, I love that music. You are, you are, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, was, oh, oh, they know me, really? You know, they know the songs. And oh, but you are doing that style of music. Yeah, but I am a big fan since this is reminding me of my childhood and everything. Young, young, young man, you know, and then oh, I know erotic. Oh, cool. And I was like, what? Oh. Fantastic. So there is people who are listening this kind of stuff, but uh, there are no radios, only the YouTube on the internet. Uh, Lydia, thank you so much for uh, spending my time with me. Thank you so much for uh, your questions. Don't forget, big on 30 January, uh, Natalie from the Sound Lovers will be here live speaking with us about people, about music, about different stuff. But don't forget to subscribe to our channel because I will post uh, weekly the Eurodance, uh, the most important Eurodance news of the week. And thank you, Lydia, the hiding, the hidden queen of Eurodance. <laughs> thank you very, very much for inviting me. And by the way, I have already subscribed. Yeah, so I am already a fan. I am there already. I know, I know. Thank you very, very much for inviting me. Go on with, with your passion. Go on with what you do. Um, don't let ever put you down of any troll, of any hater, whatever. You know, all those guys, all those bad guys, if they watch, you are interesting. You know? Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> bad promotion, if they make bad comments, it is, it is promotion. So take it easy and... Always do what your heart is telling you. Stay, stay with what you do. I do Eurodance and I'm promoting good uh, voices. Thank you so much, uh, Lydia. Uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.